In Stevens Point, Wisconsin, there's a stretch of road that runs through the woods. It is unpaved, with little around it to recommend itself. But many still wander down it, curious to see whether the legend connected to it is true. It is called Boy Scout Lane, and it is on a small, otherwise unremarkable stretch of road that a group of Boy Scouts some 20 years ago are believed to have lost their lives. And it's said they remain stuck unable to cross over due to the unfortunate circumstances of their demise. There are different variations of this legend. In one version of the story, the scouts are murdered by their bus driver, and in another, it is their scoutmaster. Sometimes they are said to have been killed as a result of a bus crash, while other times the bus merely catches fire. While some stories say that the boys simply just vanish, one by one, never to be seen again. And in yet other versions of the tale, they aren't murdered at all, but rather the victims of their own folly. The scouts, wandering away from their campsite, drop their lantern, starting a forest fire that results in the incineration of the entire troop. Occasionally, it's said that two of the Boy Scouts survive whatever fate befell their troop, only to become lost in the woods and die of starvation and exposure. No matter which way you tell it, the end result is the same group of small boys, dead. Their spirits trapped forever in that location that they tragically lost their lives. The stories, as much as we love scary urban legends, aren't true. At least there's no record of these murders or deaths in this location. And there has never been a Boy Scout camp there. The name, however, exists for a reason. The Boy Scouts of America did once own the property, and there were plans to build a camp there. The plans, however, never came to fruition, but the moniker stuck. Boy Scouts Lane. Still, though, the stories persist, growing as visitors are possibly haunted by their imaginations. Some have said that they have heard noises indicating that the ghostly scouts still travel trails, doomed never to find their way out. And others report seeing lanterns or flashlights bobbing around between the trees, only for the lights to disappear without a trace. For those who believe the version in which the scoutmaster murdered the boys... It's said that a shadow of a body swaying in the branches of an elm tree, hanging over the road, may be seen from time to time. The elm, of course, being where the scoutmaster allegedly ended his own life after realizing what he had done. Sometimes people report simply just feeling like something is watching them, only to turn and see nothing there. Others, those who drive through the forest, claim that tiny handprints have appeared on their cars, possibly belonging to the boys. Although the stories to this location may not be true, there is always a certain sense of unease places like Boy Scout Lane gives us when you visit. We as humans love to be frightened by the unknown, and we of course love to add on to stories to add even more of a creepy factor. These remote wooded areas, even without the legends, scare us enough that what might be hiding in those woods, lurking behind those trees. Now that you know the history, let me tell you a Reddit story about a trip to Boy Scout Lane. It was a warm July night in 2005. My friend Aaron was visiting our mutual friend Michelle and I up here in Stevens Point. Michelle and I had worked at a Boy Scouts camp, ironic right, that summer, and Aaron was to bring me back home in Minnesota when the weekend was over. We were bored, so Michelle suggested that we go to Boy Scout Lane and do a little investigation. We had gone to the bookstore earlier that day and found the story there. It intrigued us, so soon we were on our way, and with me in the back seat, my video camera in hand. 
Right when we turned onto the road, we all felt uneasy. You know, that dreaded feeling of being watched. Being the young adults that we are, we made jokes and tried to shake off that feeling. We went down the road and turned around. Nothing special happened. But what we saw when we got home is a different story. Michelle hooked the video camera up to the television and played the footage. At first, it looked like nothing interesting. Until there was a point when I coughed. I had just gotten over a bad cold, and right after that, a heavy, whispering breath followed. And you could tell clearly that it was not me. Michelle, Aaron, and I looked at each other with wide eyes and turned back to the television. The other two saw a bright ball of light flash by the screen for a split second. I didn't see that. As I had recorded us driving back to the main road, I faced the rolled up window, as everyone does, never thinking that spirits can actually go through things. We always think we're just, you know, we're safe. Towards the field I was looking, though, that was supposed to turn into a camp. I had the infrared light on the camera in case something moved in the field. We didn't see anything move in the field. But I swear, we saw a face pressed up against the window. And no, it was not my face. The small screen of the video camera didn't project enough light, and I was not pressed up against the window. When the three of us saw this, we screamed. Michelle's mom started yelling at us. So we ran into her room and tried to tell her what happened. We were frightened. She scorned us, but yet she refused to watch the footage. Another little tidbit that we saw. In the rear view mirror, there were two stationary lights in the upper corners. The area Boy Scout Lane is in is way away from city limits and no car was behind us. The lights stayed with us until we got deep into town again. We haven't gone out there since, but we have shown the tape to others and they saw the images. I don't know if Boy Scouts really haunt the area, but something does. I live in Stevens Point now, and this town has a lot of history to it. Anything is definitely possible, and it just makes me more of a believer. Would you guys stay the night at this location? I myself would probably only travel there if the Levengins were true. If this the murders actually happened and it was really 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 haunted you know for a good reason like that i know that sounds very very morbid and i'm glad it's not true but i probably wouldn't travel there because you know the stories aren't true all right guys thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed this episode and let me know what you think guys leave those comments uh, i love you all and i will see you next time on Tales Told in the Dark. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country.